MetaMask hacks abound, and I'm here to prevent you from losing precious, precious cryptocurrencies or NFTs through the seven key tips that I recommend you do to make sure that you're not victim of a MetaMask hack. As you might know, over the last year, as more and more people have entered the cryptocurrency space, hackers are getting more and more ingenious on in how they're hacking. Now, the hacks going on with MetaMask aren't that ingenious. They're actually just noobs and rubes not using MetaMask the best way it should. But don't feel bad if you're a noob. Even some of the best of the best who have been involved in the space sometimes get lazy. People like Stasi, the NFT game founder who's been in this space quite a bit. This is an experienced person. They actually lost up to 16 CryptoPunks and a bunch of Ethereum to a scammer that happened on the standard MetaMask hack that the average person is getting duped with. Now, we're going to cover what actually happened and how to prevent this from happening to yourself. But just so you know, this happens to everybody when they're not careful. In fact, if you read this article, they basically communicated that they were worn out, they were tired, they were exhausted, and they just took a few shortcuts even though they knew better. So you're not alone. But... This isn't the only person losing out. Some people are losing out on a ton of money. Heads of tech YouTuber actually claims to have lost up to 27 million in Ethereum and cryptocurrency because they kept so much in their MetaMask. We're going to cover the tips on how to prevent this from happening to you. But whether it's Stasi, the NFT a game co-founder, or whether it's heads of tech, people that actually consider themselves the head of technology, also get a little lazy in this world and think it'll never happen to me. The things I do won't catch up with me or hackers aren't paying attention to me. So why would they steal anything I have? So we're going to cover actually how to prevent this. The main problem you need to keep in mind about why a hack with MetaMask is so important is this. You might have a hack in something like Coinbase or KuCoin or maybe an exchange that's getting more and more reputable and you might be able to make a claim and recover some of your funds. But as it comes to MetaMask, there really is no way to have a recourse on reobtaining your funds. Once it's gone from your MetaMask, it's gone. And whether you moved it to a place where you know how to get to it later, or whether a hacker moves it to a place that they know how to get to it later, you have no way to go to MetaMask and reclaim those funds. Some people have actually been stating in our research that there's a great website that some people have been using to try to reclaim their funds. This website is Reclaim Crypto, and it's a service that's come out that you can start a process on attempting to reclaim your funds. Some of it is about being a victim of a crime where you can't really report it because the nature of cryptocurrency prevents us from being able to actually track a particular criminal. In some cases, not many, there might be a way to make a claim and get assistance to recover stolen assets. But let's be honest, in the cryptocurrency world, world, most of the people who spoke about the service said that they weren't able to get their funds. So you just need to proceed with MetaMask as if you yourself won't get any of your funds back. That's the biggest reason why it's so important that if you're using MetaMask, you ensure that you're doing the best practices so that you don't get taken advantage of. Very briefly, I want to give you insight into the number one way that hackers are actually getting access to your funds. And it's a phishing scam that's actually not that complex or complicated. They're just depending on lazy users right now. No, they're not necessarily exploiting your browser. No, they're not necessarily actually hacking or figuring out your passwords. Let's actually take a look very quickly at the most common way. This isn't the only way, but this is the most common way hackers are actually using you and your exhaustion to get access to your MetaMask and ultimately move your cryptocurrency. And it's a basic phishing scam. Now we're looking at our email here and I just got this email within the last 24 hours. Now, I don't know if this is legit. This person has a lot of information here. I could research them if I care to, but with our YouTube channel blowing up and our Discord blowing up, I can't follow up and research every single email I get. But whether it's through an email like this or a direct Discord message, if you're on Discord, you get tons and tons of messages every single day, I know I do. And they're invites to a new NFT platform or their invites to a new contest or lottery going on. Or in this guy's case, he actually mentions a service, Zapper.Fi. Let's pretend I haven't heard of Zapper.Fi. If I haven't heard of Zapper.Fi, and no, you never click a link in an email, I typed it in, I searched it a little bit, and I brought this up. Now, the way hackers are actually getting access to your email is if this was an NFT site or a fake OpenSea, 
Or in the case of Stasi, the co-founder of NFT Game, it was a site that looked like the CryptoPunk site. He was tired, he didn't check the URL, and he didn't make extra sure he was where he should have been. It was literally a duplicate website that looks like it has since been taken down. But whether it's a site that's new to you or a site that looks like a site that you're used to, you might be tempted to open up your MetaMask and connect because it'll say connect wallet. Now, right here, you can see I've got my password here and I might even type in my password. But what hackers do is they throw up a warning that says something's gone wrong with MetaMask, please enter your 12 word seed phrase. Now listen to me, if you ever get a warning to enter in your 12 word seed phrase from anywhere on the planet other than MetaMask and it's metamask.io, actually check the URL. If you are asked to enter your 12 word seed phrase on any website other than MetaMask, that's a red flag, bail out and leave. And that's what happened to the co-founder of NFT Game when they actually were hacked. They entered in their 12 word seed phrase because they thought they were on the right website and they trusted the fact that this was a crypto punk website. So they went ahead, entered their 12 word seed phrase and they woke up the next day to missing 16 crypto punks up to $385,000 worth and a ton of Ethereum. That's the number one way that hackers are actually getting access. They'll promise an NFT, they'll promise that you're on some airdrop site, or it'll look like a site that you're used to visiting and it'll throw up a warning that says something went wrong with MetaMask, enter your 12 word seed phrase. Now that should be a red flag for anyone. This as a number one exploit for hackers is really depending on lazy, tired people trying to get ahead of the game. This is why these hackers are depending on average crypto investors like yourself trying to get in early. With everything going on today in cryptocurrency, the name of the game is getting into a project early. So investors are even sacrificing security just to get involved into that one NFT or get whitelisted quickly. They're not checking the URL. They're not actually crossing their T's and, and dotting their I's and ensuring that they're not in a hack situation. Or if someone asks for their 12 word seed phrase, for some reason, the scarcity mind of them to get in early makes them skip over asking the question, why would they ask for my 12 word seed phrase? That would never, never happen. Whether this is the hack that gets you or another hack that gets you, let's cover the seven key ways to use MetaMask safely and securely to ensure that you don't get hacked. Now, this is not a guarantee you won't get hacked because hackers are ingenious and they're always finding new ways to get access to your material. But this is the best way to proceed right now so that you're moving forward safely and trustworthy. The first one is simply this, use the MetaMask mobile app. The MetaMask mobile app is thorough. It actually has its own browser. So if you open up the MetaMask wallet, you have to use often your fingerprint or your password to actually even access it and it's only happening through your phone. Then you can use the browser and browse to the website you wanna be at and then connect from there. You can check the URL there, plenty of warnings happen there. So to be safer, you really only wanna use the mobile wallet at all. This will mainly prevent you from being at risk using your browser or moving too quickly by using your desktop browser or the Chrome browser extension for MetaMask. So the number one rule, use the mobile app. Now let's be honest, I don't only use the mobile app and you probably won't either, but I would be remiss if I didn't tell you this is the number one way to stay safe with MetaMask is to only use the mobile app. The second thing you can do, I've already said it and I'll say it again, don't enter your 12 word seed phrase on any website except the metamask.io website. No website on the planet. If someone asks, you need to look, is this metamask.io? If it's not, bail out of the website. That's the second item. Never enter your 12 word C phrase on any website except the MetaMask website. But if you're gonna go ahead and use the Google Chrome extension as I still do, you're gonna wanna follow these additional steps. Let's look at it. We were just assuming that you're gonna go ahead because it's convenient and use the Google Chrome extension. The third way to protect yourself is to never keep an extensive amount of funds or NFTs in your MetaMask. In fact, if anything, you should only use MetaMask to simply transfer funds between one account and the next, between your Coinbase account and your staking at Jade or your Coinbase account and your trading and lending account on KuCoin. You should only really ever use your MetaMask to transfer funds. This is a precaution. Not a lot of people follow because it it's just convenient to leave your currencies in MetaMask. But if you follow that rule of thumb of only using MetaMask to transfer funds, and then you empty the funds out of your MetaMask, 
you really reduce the risk that even if hackers get into your account, that they can actually have any resources to manipulate or steal from you anyway. So the third point, don't keep any funds, resources, or NFTs in there if possible. Now it's not always easy to move your NFTs to another wallet or somewhere else that's not in MetaMask, but please do your homework, find a way to store your NFTs and currencies elsewhere. Number four is simply this, set a lockout period for your Google Chrome extension MetaMask. So if you're in your MetaMask wallet and you're trying to set a lockout period, a quick and easy way is to simply click lock. You can go ahead and click that button. As soon as you're done with the website, if you lock it, it'll actually lock you out and you'll have to enter your password the next time you enter this site. But you can also go to settings, go to advanced, scroll down, until you come to automatic lockout timer and I've got mine set to seven minutes. In all honesty, I wouldn't do too much more than five minutes. This is five minutes of idle time. After five minutes of idle time, it'll automatically lock you out of MetaMask. This is number four as another safety precaution. And while you're in here, the fifth key to protecting yourself in MetaMask is to simply remove connected sites that you're no longer utilizing. While you're in your MetaMask, simply hit the three dots, go to connected sites, and you can actually see what sites you're connected to. Now, if you look here, it's high time that I actually audit this list. Let's say I haven't used Spirit Swap in a while. I can simply click disconnect and that's gone. I can simply disconnect Pancake Swap. And yes, this will force me to have to reconnect the next time I use Pancake Swap. That might be tomorrow, but I have, can actually go through and remove each of these that I know I don't need or haven't used in a while. Like Red Planet Finance, I can't even remember when I first used that. Roll.collab.land, don't even know when I actually used that last. So go through and audit your site and remove connected sites that you haven't used in a while or you don't use frequently you can actually cover your butt like this in a big way. The sixth item is simply this. Do not connect to airdrop websites or NFT websites or discords even without doing your homework first. If you come to a Web3 website that says connect your wallet and it's an airdrop, hey, we're gonna give you X, Y, and Z for free, please do your homework first. Type in the name of that thing and scam and look in Google and just see. I know that in today's gold rush of trying to get in early, it was IPOs, then it was ICOs, now it's IDOs and getting whitelisted in early access to coins and all sorts of projects because that's where the riches are. Now, I'm not a big fan of rushing. If you've watched the Spark Nation at all, you know that I'm all about level-headed investments. Even though we talk a lot about things like Jade or Wonderland and some ohms and some sketchy projects, we only do that with a very small amount of our portfolios as we recommend in the Discord. So when it comes to an airdrop, don't be in such a hurry to get in early that you don't do basic research to see if there's any known exploits or hacks or loss of funds going on right now. Yes, any project could be a rug pull. Yes, any project could begin to take your money but it could take you just an extra 30 seconds or a minute to actually do homework and say, is the team doxxed? Can I even identify who the team is? And know that if I don't know who's responsible for this airdrop site, if I don't fully trust it, take a second to actually decide if you wanna open up your MetaMask, connect it, and be at risk of them being able to take your funds. Please be careful when accessing airdrop websites. The seventh item and last item is just another final measure you can take to make sure that hackers don't get access to your MetaMask. So I'm on the MetaMask website and I want you to notice one thing. In Google Chrome, I've got a star here and that star is just another small cue, another Another clue that this is a trusted site. First and foremost, I checked to make sure that I was on the right website. I actually saw that we have a padlock. This isn't just a knockoff website and I've already bookmarked. For websites that you use often, please bookmark them. In bookmarking them, it can come up and you can glance over and make sure that this was a bookmarked site. In the case of Stasi, the NFT game co-founder, if they had had that bookmark as a final measure to glance, they would have noticed I'm on the wrong website because my bookmark's not there. Then they would have noticed that instead of .io, it was .com and they were on the wrong website. So there you have it, the seven ways you can protect yourself with MetaMask. The number one being try to use the mobile app, but if you're like me and you want good convenience on using your MetaMask through your Google Chrome web browser, take these extra steps to cover your butt if this has been helpful at all, please like or subscribe or share this video with someone who might need to hear it. Please consider joining our free Discord and of course become a patron. The patrons always hear about our group investments first. The Discord users hear about our projects and group investments second. So please get involved, join today. Thank you so much, but no matter what you do, remember the mission, igniting lives of explosive significance, starting with your own.
have a great day.